Hello and welcome to lecture 37. From today we will be start discussing about design of low speed axial flow compressor. So in last module we were discussing about the criteria for the selection of various design parameters. We also were discussing about the guidelines for the selection of these initial parameters for first cut design. Then we have discussed about the systematic approach for the design of axial flow compressor with different design approaches. We realize say if we are planning to design say axial flow compressor for aero engines, they are looking for special kind of attention. And that's what is starting with say basic cycle analysis, your gas turbine cycle analysis, thermodynamic cycle analysis based on which initial parameters in sense of mass flow rate, speed, efficiency, pressure ratio, temperatures, all those parameters we are calculating. Then later on based on our expectation we are planning to distribute this pressure ratio or overall pressure ratio in say maybe LP compressor and HP compressor. And for that we are we were deciding about the overall pressure ratio for say HP compressor as well as overall pressure ratio for say LP compressor. And based on that we started discussing about the selection of say number of stages. We also were discussing about different non-dimensional parameters called say flow coefficient, loading coefficient, pressure rise coefficient all those parameters they are of great importance. We started discussing about say very first part suppose say if you are planning for designing say axial flow compressor for aero engine or say for land based power plant. Very first requirement that is what is what is the mass flow rate suppose if we say for aero engine then my thrust requirement that is what is a function of my mass flow rate and that is what is of great importance. So that is what is a parameter which we need to decide with. Next that is what will be overall pressure ratio, number of stages required. So in order to calculate these parameters we are looking for say axial speed, we, will, we are looking for say peripheral speed, we have defined a parameter called flow coefficient, radius ratio, casing, tip diameter, say rotational speed, all these parameters they are coming under designer's decision. Then very important part that is what is to decide with the number of stages and we were having good discussion about how do we decide with say number of stages. Once we have decided with our number of stages we need to decide with say what will be the distribution of my pressure or pressure ratio and what will be my assumed efficiency. For that we have discussed for our initial stage we can say we can expect higher pressure ratio from them. My efficiency, polytropic efficiency or per stage efficiency we can say for initial stage that is what is say lower and that is what we say around 86 percent and pressure ratio we are expecting to be say 1.5 to 1.8. Next that is what is say your middle stages and for that we have found my flow that is what is flowing it is more uniform in sense and that is the reason why our expected efficiency will be in the range of 90 to 92 percent and at the same time our pressure ratio will be moderate in sense say 1.3 to 1.4. When we are discussing about the later stages or the rear stages of our axial flow compressor where our blades that will be having lower height because of our compressibility effect we can say because of rise of pressure our change of density which will be bringing change in our area and that is the reason why those rear blades are shorter blades. When these blades are shorter there are more chances for having your flow to go three dimensional and that is the reason why there we are not expecting more pressure rise. So that number it is in the range of 1.05 to 1.15 okay and efficiency will be in the range of 88 percent. So initial first cut design our assumption for the pressure ratio and efficiency this is what will be giving us the idea. Then we have discussed about say calculation of different parameters which include say my whirl component, 
my blade angles my flow angles degree of reaction diffusion factor all those parameters we are calculating at the mid section and that's what is giving us idea what need to be the work distribution along my span again this is what is coming in say choice for the designer so designer has to decide what all distribution he or she will be looking for once we are deciding with this part we start design with a single stage axial flow compressor for which we will be having say calculation of all these parameters at hub mid and tip section then systematically we need to divide our span into number of say subsections and at all subsections we need to calculate all these parameters that's what will be giving us idea how the blade of your rotor as well as stator will be looking like okay once this is what is done say we will be reaching to the stage where we are having our blade that's what will be ready with but before finalizing that part some of the important clues it says like my camber angle at the hub that's what will be going to be large because i will be having my delta beta to be large in that particular region so it says try to avoid this camber angle to go more than 45 degree next parameter which we need to keep on eye that's what is our degree of reaction so if we say our degree of reaction to be zero or say negative that's what you need to avoid and that's what is the designer's choice how to modify the section particularly this kind of situation is happening near the hub region okay so designer will decide how do we manage the degree of reaction within our required range or say assume range one more parameter as we have discussed that's what is say diffusion factor this diffusion factor that says like it should not be more than 0.5 but for most modern design if you look at we are having degree of reaction that's what is going in the range of 0.6 so when we start doing our design that time we will be keeping on eye so there is some guidelines that's what is available with us so we will be started doing design based on these guidelines then after we will be verifying whether we are meeting with our expectations or not and accordingly based on the requirement we need to modify certain parameters but the initial guess that's what is very important some of the guidelines that's what is given some parameters it's defined in open literature they say like my flow coefficient that need to be in the range of 0.3 to 0.9 and preferred value it is a 0.6 this flow coefficient as we have discussed earlier that's what is been defined sometimes in the in the, in the form of mid section sometimes people they are taking at the tip section so you need to be careful about that number next as we have discussed our diffusion factor should not be more than 0.6 it is preferred that if we are maintaining this diffusion factor in the range of 0.45 for our design case axial mark number that's what is at the entry of our stage that need to be in the range of 0.3 to 0.6 it's preferred that like 0.55 it is okay kind of number degree of reaction as we have discussed that's what is varying from 0.1 to 0.9 it says for say subsonic kind of compressor we will be going with say our degree of reaction in the range of 0.5 reynolds number that's what is very important in sense of all kind of aerodynamics losses that those are happening on the suction surface and that's what is responsible for say flow separation and stalling that's the reason why this is what is very important parameter it says based on my cord that number need to be you know that need to be in the range of say 3 lakhs okay and preferred number that's what is less than 5 lakhs okay now relative mark number that's what is say in the range of 1.7 it is preferred you will be going with say 1.3 to 1.5 it's a okay kind of number stage solidity that need to be in the range of 1 to 2 preferred value that's what is 1.4 stage aspect ratio as we have discussed there is a trend for going for say low aspect ratio we have seen over the year people they are preferred to go with say low aspect ratio kind of design so which stage we are designing 
based on that we need to decide with this aspect ratio it says preferred that's what is if you are going with say more than 2 it is preferred for that okay now in sense of efficiency as we have discussed the polytropic efficiency it is very important we have discussed about say different stages that need to be vary in the range of 0.8 to 0.9 okay so we can say we have discussed for say our middle stage we are considering that to be 92 percent for say initial stage that's what is say 85 percent or later stages we are assuming that to be 88 percent so that's what we need to take care of the loading coefficient that need to be in the range of say 0 0.4 0 0.2 to 0.5 it says preferably if we are going with 0.35 it is okay now dc aerofoil when we are using that's what is say our flow or our mark number that's what is in the range of 0.8 to 1.2 it is to prefer to go with say dca kind of aerofoil when we are having say mark number that's what is less or equal to 0.8 we can go with say naga 65 d hollers numbers we have discussed that need to be more than 0 0.72 0 0.75 it's a good number for that case my leading edge radius that's what need to be in the range of 5 to 10 percent of my thickness of the aerofoil now compressor pressure ratio per spool it says that need to be less than 20 up to 20 that's what is preferred so these days we are talking about say high overall pressure ratio kind of configuration so there this number may be varying in, in, in sense of requirement the actual gap between say rotor and stator it says it need to be in the range of 0.23 to 0.25 of actual cord it depends which kind of compressor we are designing okay aspect ratio as we have discussed for the fan that need to be in the range of 1.5 we are compromising somewhere in sense of efficiency but that's what is increasing our overall operating range and overall pressure rise so that's where it is preferred to go with say aspect ratio for fan in the range of 1.5 Taper ratio that's what is defined in sense of my cord at hub and cord at the tip and it is preferred that we will be going with the taper ratio of 0.8. So this is what is giving us idea about what all parameter we can initially guess with. There are so many ideas behind design of actual flow compressor. It varies from company to company. It varies from designer to designer and it varies based on the experience and available computational and experimental tools now let's see we will start with the design of say low speed axial flow compressor so this is what is the data that's what is available with us so engine design company is planning for say compressor stage testing using existing low speed testing facility at iit kharagpur the Compressor has inlet temperature and pressure of 298 Kelvin and 101.325 kilopascal respectively. The expected average total pressure rise is 1000 Pascal with expected efficiency of 80%. The design mass flow rate is 4 kg per second. The rotational speed is 2400 rpm and casing diameter is 400 mm. Assume the flow to be axial at the entry of the compressor and at the exit of the compressor. The additional data that's what is given it says my aspect ratio for the blade it is 1, cord is 100 mm and CA by U tip that's what is 0.73. Okay. Now suggest the geometrical dimensions for say stage using free vortex design fundamental design approach and force vortex approach discuss your important observation while doing the design so we will be taking this data for say our design for low speed axial flow compressor now let's look at what all it's a meaning of that so this is what is representing phi versus psi plot that's what has been taken from Maglumpi's paper it says different high pressure rise 
or high total pressure kind of configuration they are available for say different phi and psi. So, these are some of the data that is what is available. Here for our compressor our data that is what is lying here where we are having our flow coefficient to be larger and our pressure rise coefficient that is what is in the range. Okay, so, we are going to design for this particular stage. Now, we have taken this data that is what is for specific reason. Now, let us try to understand why we are doing design for this low speed axial flow compressor and why this company they are planning to do their testing here. So, what we learn, what all we know, we are having multi stage axial flow compressor in which because of my rotation of the wheel, we are having say growth of boundary layer near the end wall region, we are having the presence of tip leakage flow, we are having the presence of secondary flow, all this that is what is making my flow through axial flow compressor to be very complex and three dimensional. What we know from our fundamental that is what is say using Euler's equation, it says my work done that is what is the function of my peripheral speed and delta Cw, okay, that is what we are defining in sense of our tangential velocity component or wall component. Now, we started discussing about so many aspects for the future requirement. What are our future requirement? It says we are looking for high pressurized per stage, we are looking for higher aerodynamic loading, we are looking for high speed, we are looking for low aspect ratio blade, this all they are related with our requirement of improvement in specific fuel consumption. So, we are looking for compact machines, lightweight machines which will be reducing our weight and drag that is what will be helping us in sense of improvement of fuel consumption. Even we are looking for wider operating range. So, all this requirement that is what is coming into the picture. So, you know it is very challenging because when we are going with such kind of expectation, we will be having difficulties in sense of flow separation, we will be having difficulties in sense of having rise in losses means we will be having loss of efficiency, we will be having say stall margin as a penalty. So, this is what we are looking for in sense of our improvement. Okay. Now, when we are expecting this kind of thing that is what is different from what already existing compressors they are having. Okay. So, let us try to look at what all is the meaning. So, this is what is a diagram that is what was given by Whistler. So, here if you look at this is what is say my rotor and stator. This is what is representing what is happening near my hub. We are having flow separation that is what is happening near my hub for the rotor as well as near say stator also. Similarly, we are having say tip clearance loss, we are having end wall boundary layer and as we have discussed that is what is giving more complexity to my flow. And this is what will lead to increase the losses. Now, when I say increase in losses, we are expecting our efficiency to be higher that means we need to minimize these losses. Okay. So, for all this purpose we need to go for systematic testing. Now, when I say testing my compressor for HP spool or HP compressor that is what will be rotating at high speed maybe 12,000 to 18,000 rpm. Same way if we are looking for say LP spool though it is rotating at low speed my diameter is larger. Okay. So, suppose say we are discussing about say high spool or say high pressure rise compressor, we know that is what is the heart of the engine, we have discussed about that part. So, if we are looking for testing for such kind of compressors, then we need to go with the higher rotational speed, same as my engine speed. That is what will lead to higher amount of stresses, mechanical stresses will be increased higher power requirement that may be going in the range of megawatts. Okay. At the same time that is what is increasing our risk as well as the investment. So, you can understand suppose if it is rotating at very high speed 
when you are you are doing your testing that means it is little risky to handle this kind of situation okay in laboratory now major challenge that's what will be coming is in sense of measurements so in order to measure our velocity components in order to measure the pressure in order to measure the flow angles for that we are using say probes it that may be multi hole probes or maybe say hot wire probes so when we are using that then because of presence of these probes that's what will be acting like a obstruction to my flow and that's what lead to change my flow physics within my flow passage and that too if it is say high speed you can understand my flow physics that's what will be changing drastically because of presence of my shocks okay then where do we place say the space that's what is available that may be one of the constraint the accuracy because you can understand suppose my rotor is rotating at 15000 rpm my per blade movement if we are measuring that's what will be coming in the sense of microseconds or nanoseconds like you need to have those data acquisition system which will be capturing all this flow physics okay then the cost criteria that's what is coming into the picture now we are more interested in what is happening in sense of flow field we can say detailed flow field study suppose say we are looking for what is happening between two rotor blades what is happening between two stator blades such kind of detailed flow field measurement that will be very difficult when we are talking about this high speed kind of configuration the very big challenge that's what will be coming is in sense of shocks and shock boundary layer interaction okay so if we consider we need to find for other alternatives what all are the alternatives one alternative straight way will come it says maybe we will be using our cfd tool or we can say we can go with say experimental facilities now when we are talking about the experimental facilities we have seen this all are the challenges we are having for such kind of compressor when we say our cfd that's what is more or less we can say in sense of colorful display sorry for that but you can understand unless and until your cfd simulations they are been validated with the experimentation that simulation has no value and when we are talking about application to aero engine where we are very particular we are very specific few point variation that has more impact in sense of what all we are expecting so that's the reason why now you know challenge that's what will be coming is you need to go with more in sense of experimentation even for your validation for cfd you need to do your experimentation now suppose if you are looking for say companies they may go for say this kind of experimental facility that's not a big deal but at the same time they are more involved in research development fabrication testing all those activities so now what will happen the work that will go to someone else so if we look at say this is what we are looking for say this work that will go to universities or maybe some research centers now when we are talking about the universities this all what we are discussing that's what will be very challenging so we need to have the solution for this problem what is the solution it says we need to go with low speed experimentation when we say low speed experimentation my rotational speed will be lower that's what will be having say lower stresses power requirement also will be less our risk factor that's what is less compared to our high speed configuration when we say increase the measurement possibilities because now we are having some kind of flow that's what easily can be captured by using these probes of specific dimensions we can put them in a flow domain as per our expectation we will be getting data in more accurate form and cost also will be coming in sense of reduction we can say we can go with say detail flow field measurement no shock and shock boundary layer interaction that's what is a benefit of going with a low speed compressor facility 
and we can even use blades or vane they may be instrumented in order to study the detailed flow field okay and that too with the sufficient size when we are talking about my flow reynolds number that's what is one of the criteria where we will be having such kind of low speed facility that's what will be helping us in sense of achieving what we are looking for so now the question will come yes we have solution for low speed testing facility but the question is how do we address this how do we arrange or how do we go with it says the success of this model testing that's what is depending on my aerodynamic similarity okay so it says geometrically similar bodies with the same orientation are moved through a fluid so that similarity parameters name say reynolds number and mach number are equal then dimensional forces on these two bodies are equal so we can understand we are having two parameters that's what we need to be check with one that's what is say reynolds number and second that's what is say mach number when we say mach number then you know that's what is giving additional complexity because we can understand when we are talking about mach number if my flow is going transonic or supersonic my flow structure my flow field that's what will be different what it says in the case dimension parameter dimensionless parameter remains invariant with the mach number if we arrange the angle of attack camber and the thickness of the aerofoil as increase of you know address of change of my mark number okay so the situation is suppose if we are considering our suction surface of the aerofoil now in on suction surface we have our acceleration of our flow that's what can be modified in order to meet the requirement of such numbers okay the great curve must be exercised in modeling the progress if the meaningful results are to be achieved not only the geometry but we need to take care of surface roughness we need to take care of turbulence intensity we need to take care of reynolds number along with that we are having more complexity in sense of solidity and aspect ratio so this all parameters that's what is bringing more challenge in order to what we are thinking of in sense of having aerodynamic similarity but at the same time as proposed by wiesler say the low speed aerodynamic model of high speed core compressor can be designed and fabricated using your aerodynamic similarity principle this model which has same solidity aspect ratio vector diagram reaction reynolds number surface pressure distribution clearance to blade height axial spacing to chord as same as our axial speed compressor say high speed compressor and low speed compressor that's what we need to manage with now once we are doing this similarity then we will be finding the high loss region and that's what will be helping us in sense of identifying the location where the losses are major with low speed or low cost and low risk we are able to find the locations or we are able to find these losses which that can be applicable or maybe we will check for multi stage axial flow compressor for high speed configuration okay now the challenge here it says the test will be conducted on built up that's what is consist of multiple blading stage to operate the blading in a multi stage environment so that we can simulate that in proper way to identify the loss mechanism so what low speed configuration we are discussing that's what is can need to be conducted for say multi stage configuration okay now after this loss mechanism or loss formation that's what we have identify then we can modify our design as per our requirement and in order to address the losses to be minimized and that can be tested this modification that's what will be in the sense of say maybe aerofoil section end walls vector diagram 
that's what will be increasing or changing my stall margin. Maybe we can go with the innovative ideas as we have discussed earlier, say custom tailored aerofoil, vector diagram where you will be having aerofoil air bends, say unorthodox wall contouring, bleed, leakage scheme, all this can be tested and checked with in order to check the effectiveness and the improvement what we are expecting with. Okay. Now these improvements, that's what is once we have achieved, that can be incorporated in sense of say high speed configuration. So accurate detailed experimental data that can be used to develop and improve your analytical model and maybe for the future design techniques. Finally, what all we are getting that can be used with say minimum say risk in sense of aerodynamic penalty at the same time that's what is not affecting our ongoing design program or say major engine design program. Now what happens say you know like in sense of aerofoil saves that's what is appear to be showing the improvement in performance it may be adversely affecting our stall margin it may be possible okay since we are having our costing for making of this blade that's what is lower so we can go with say multiple configurations we can go with say number of blade rotors and stator that can be modified and tested that's what may not be possible with say your high speed configuration because it will be expensive affair but what happens if we are doing all this kind of situation, the, the initial or say finally the question that is what will be coming, what all are the disadvantages? It says the effect of shock wave cannot be evaluated. Okay? But we need to understand this is not the consideration in middle or the rear stage of our core compressor. So, what method we are discussing in sense of our aerodynamic similarity or say transition or formation of experimental facility from high speed to low speed transformation that is what can be safely being used when we are discussing for the design of say HP compressors. Okay. So there are more details that is what is available in open literature many universities, many companies, they are exploring this possibility. There are many experimental facilities which are available globally in order to do such kind of testing. Now the question will come what all data we are achieving by having say low speed testing that need to be transformed in say high speed configuration and that is what is more challenging. A person who is involved with that kind of work he need to have detailed understanding. Here my geometrical parameter, geometrical similarity, aerodynamic similarity, those all terms they are coming into the picture. So many times what all results we are achieving that will be non-dimensionalized in the form and that can straight away be used for high speed configuration. So this is what is possible and universities and engine making company they are together, they are working on these aspects. Okay. So, in order to have that kind of understanding, we have taken the numerical. So, in next lecture, we will be discussing how do we go with say design of low speed axial flow compressor for such kind of requirements. So, thank you very much for your kind attention. I am sure this what we have discussed that will be helpful to you in sense of understanding, do not consider that what all we are doing at the university level for say low speed testing, it is of no use, this data they are of more importance, those who are matured enough, they know how to use this data for the future developments. Thank you.